On this episode of Wheels in Motion, we're in Spanish Springs with a 1972 Chevy Nova. Well, here we are. It's the very first episode of Wheels in Motion. This show is all about cars that are used and driven and enjoyed and generally put together on a budget, more or less. I'm Cody. This is Gary. Hello. We're driving around in Gary's car today. Gary, why don't you tell a little bit about this car? Well, it's a 72 Nova. Uh, it, it's originally from around town here. Um, it's a 350, 350 car, so it's got a 350, 350 turbo transmission. Basically, just a 10 volt rear. It's a pretty basic street driver, and it was kept that way. Um, the engine is a 350, 30 over. It's been fully balanced. It's got a good bottom end. Good rods, good crank, full studded, um, windage tray, crank scraper, seven quart pan, all that's got good 202 style heads on it. Um, flat tops about nine to one. Um, relatively mild cam, but looking at probably in the 460 range somewhere in that lift. It's got one six rockers on it. Um, makes an honest probably 360 to 370 horsepower. Um, I built it to also put either a bottle or a small blower on it. So it kept the compression relatively low. It responds really, really well to nitrous. It's had a 100 shot on it. It runs really good. Uh, it's got a 308, eight and a half inch 10 bolt in the rear. Um, try to keep it relatively streetable. The 308s make it pretty livable on the street. We're cruising it around. You can drive it anywhere. And this car pulls surprisingly hard for a car with that long of a gear, really. Yeah, and you know, I, we put it together basically to make torque more than a lot of horsepower. It makes really good torque. Uh, it pulls really good. Um, you know, being nine to one or nine, you know, nine and a quarter or so to one, um, you know, you can run it on regular gas. You don't have to worry about you know, 93 or any of that run it on good gas it runs all day long it runs cold you know this thing runs usually around 160 or so it doesn't heat up makes good power you know it sits at 60 pounds oil pressure all day long and you could just get in this car and drive it pretty much just about anywhere uh, it runs the last time it was down the quarter mile it runs like uh, up here at 5,000 feet it ran a low 14 like a 14 so puts it into you know roughly a high 13 second car at sea level, uh, which is respectable for a car that this car basically has about four thousand dollars. That's including the paint, everything that's in this car. Well, yeah, and it's the, the enjoyment. I think we get the most out of what we do is that these cars never are really finished. You can take a look. You can see that this car, you know, it's going to need a headliner at some point, but you're having fun driving it. Yeah. So that's that's the best part is to have a car that's enjoyable to drive, and that's really kind of the focus of what where, where we're at with this program is to show that you can do something yourself with a little bit of know-how, a few SAE tools, and have a car that is as much fun, if not more, than something somebody sunk a hundred thousand dollars into, and is essentially a trailer queen because it's too nice to drive anywhere. Yeah. And you know, I'm not afraid to take this car out. I've had this car on the road now for almost 13, 12, 13 years. And I have a new headliner. I have the parts to finish a lot of most of this car, all the new rubbers and seals and felts. I've just been having so much fun driving it around yeah. that it's like, uh, I'd rather drive it than work on it. You get it to that point where it's drivable, it looks pretty much, you know, done. It's probably 85% complete. And then you just go, you know, I'm having so much fun driving this car around that I'm just going to continue to drive it and enjoy it. And likely, you know, as my car gets closer to done, I'm building a 70 uh, Mach 1 Mustang, you're going to see things that maybe don't get quite completely finished right now because it's just too much fun to drive. Yeah. You know, I'm having way too much fun getting out and making noise with it and just enjoying the view from behind the wheel looking at that shaker move as we're going down the road. Exactly. You know, you put so much time and effort into something that when you do finally get it to that point where it's 
kind of done in your own eyes. You're like, okay, it's painted, it runs and drives, it's safe to drive, I'm going to drive it. You kind of back off from some of that work a little bit. You know, you have a tendency to go off. I've been working on this thing for how long now, I want to just drive it. And that's just what you want do. To, you just go it. You just drive it. And that's what this show is about driving. Yeah. People that enjoy their cars, take them out, drive them on a day that, you know, can look out here it's almost you know you never know if it's gonna rain I don't care if it rains on this car I don't care if it gets dirty it, it's what it was meant to do this car was meant to be driven it was bought brand new as a daily driver and it kind of still is I you know, the weather's nice we drive it yeah it gets driven a lot I've spent a lot of hours cruising in this car I've ridden in your other car you got a 69 vet right yeah and it's, it's a similar kind of car too it's it's by no means a hundred point show car it's Kind of the same condition as this it looks nice but it's a little rougher on the edges at times if you climbed under but it gets driven a lot the car gets driven almost more than this does it gets driven you know i put four or five thousand miles a year on that car yeah. and almost the same on this and i can tell you just from you know my experience being around cruise nights these, those two cars get just as much attention as the high-end cars oh yeah and do. it's simply because they're different and you never know what's going to show up it might be the that might be this car or this car might look completely different it might have a different set of wheels on it whereas now it has the drag light style it might have torque thrust it might wind up with a glass hood and a tunnel ramp yes you know that's a neat thing with what we do with these cars wheels and tires something as simple as that a lot of guys you'll see wind up selling their cars because they get bored with them over time when a simple wheel and tire swap would change the entire character of the car yeah, exactly. and give you something entirely new to go take a look at every day so you know that's kind of one of the things that we've always done I know my car you know I have a set of stock magnet 500 wheels but right now it has a set of slotted mags on it because I wanted to give it an early 70s kind of a look and I'm really into period correct things like that though yeah. I mean, it's just so it simplifies the 17 inch wheels and the big brakes are really neat, don't get me wrong. But one thing you have to remember about these cars when you're looking through Hot Rod Magazine or whatever else, and this is nothing against any of those magazines, but they promote the aftermarket suspensions and the big aftermarket brakes and all this other stuff. You have to remember that the factory spent millions and millions of dollars engineering the brakes and suspension on these cars, and they work. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. They really work. Well, that's the beauty of this car is, is it is pretty much stock. It has a stock front sway bar. It has new shocks on it. It has stock rear multi-leaf springs because it was originally a V8 car. Um, this car, it, it drives like it did when it left the showroom. It handles pretty well. It's, it's by no means a full-on drag race car or a full-on road race car. This car is a street car. It was meant to be driven originally, and I kept it that way so that I can cruise it and drive it. This car is, is not going to, you know, break down because it's so temperamental. It is basically a driver, and like you said, we change wheels and tires on it to give it a little different look. I have the drag light style wheels on it now to give it kind of that 80s drag race current drag kind of look to it. Um, I have a, that set of torque thrust to make it look similar to, you know, a 70s street machine. And I also have a set of stock rally wheels. And because we didn't do a lot of body mods or anything on it, this car is basically stock. It still is all this the original trim. It looks like a stock Nova. So you can drive it around and it appeals to those type, that crowd of people that maybe like restorations and things like that. Or if I want to fit in with the street machine, drag race crowd. Like I said, I have another hood for it. It has had a tunnel ram and all that on it. And it just changes the look of the car. So you never really get bored with the car. You're always, if you do start to get tired of it and you go, well, I want to change it for this cruise season. I can put the fiberglass hood on it and put these drag lights on it. It has a totally different look than if I just have the stock rally. Yeah. And it's, it's a comfortable car to be inside. Yes, yeah, that's it what I like. I mean, nice. no, these aren't stock bucket seats, but they're very
very comfy. Would these come out of a game? They came out of a 68 Camaro. I bought them okay. at a swap meet. They were very cheap. I bought them for another car, uh, another Nova, an earlier Nova that I had. And uh, Oh, that was the wagon of death, right? The, the wagon, yeah. One of these times we will tell we'll the story the of the wagon of death. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't like to remember all that stuff. But uh, that car with nothing but problems. This car has been, you know, nothing but fun. It's a big difference there. Um, but they bolted right in. You know, originally this car came with a bench seat, and the bench was gone when I got. I got the car as a roller. It was basically just a shell with a partial interior in it, and you know, I. I had these laying around, it's like I'm going to use them. I have them, let's use them. So we put them in, they work. They've been in the car as long as it's been on the road. And, you know, there's no need to spend tons of money on stuff when you have parts laying around that you can use. And you know, and, you know, as a car guy, we all have parts. We all use the stuff we have. But one of the things that never really gets talked about when people are trying to build their own cars, you can accomplish so much by going to swap meets and looking for things that you need, and by just bartering and trading out with friends and acquaintances and everything else. You never know what you're going to wind up with. A perfect example of that is the engine in this was originally I had a 307 laying around that was in one of the other cars, and I put it in here and I drove it for about a year. And it ran fine, but it just, you know, it, it didn't have quite the power I wanted. So, a friend had had a bunch of machine work already done on a good 350 block and crank had pistons rods everything it was fully balanced it just hadn't been assembled yet yeah and i traded a guitar for it that i had very little money and maybe 200 bucks so you know i got you came out all right probably 1200 dollars worth of of parts and machine work and all that if not more for a, you know, a two hundred dollar guitar, so it it was like that's the kind of thing you do to save money, and, and if you can do that, you're just ahead of the game, especially if you're into the car for a very relatively low initial investment. No doubt about it. You know, and this this car has, as you can see, we're going to go into you know regular everyday driving. This car has normal street manners. You know, it, it drives like a stock car. It just has a little more horsepower than a stock cylinder. So it's clutch. Well, like we said, our focus is driving. And so you're going to see a string of cars on this show that may not be 100% perfect show queens, but they're cars that get used and they get used a lot and joy. And I think that's really that's really the focus of, of how we try to build cars. And that's where initially we're wanting to focus it on muscle cars that were used a lot. But there's so many other really cool cars out there. Trucks are a huge part of our hobby. Trucks. I have a 79 Chevy. You've got a sister 79 GMC to it. And, and you know, you'll see Volkswagens are about as cool as they get. Sure. So, there's so much different stuff that we can highlight. We thought that Wheels of Motion was a far broader reaching term than Muscle Car Motion, which was the original planned name for this. So you're gonna see an awful lot of different cars, and you're gonna hear the point of view of the owner who built the car, and why they built it the way they did, and how much they really enjoy this. Yeah, it's, and as we pointed out, it's about using your cars. It's about having fun with them doing it on a budget. You don't have to cash out your 401k to build a car to be in this right. This no. is, you know, you build it on a cheap budget. And it doesn't happen just overnight. I mean, we're, you know, we're average guys, just like 99% of you out there. These cars come together over time. And, and nothing, you know, nothing that, what do they say? If it's, if you have to wait for it, it's worth it. Yeah. You know, nothing happens overnight on it. I've been working on this Mustang now for a decade, but it's come together fairly inexpensive considering the relative value of the car. That, and you do you do the work yourself. When you, yes. when you can do the majority of the work yourself, 
you cut that labor cost down so much and that's where anything I mean everybody's going to need to buy parts and, and, and we talked about being able to barter for parts and getting parts at swap meets and online you can always go on Craigslist and people are always trying to get rid of things that's easy but the labor cost is what really starts to add up you build any high dollar car and you look at most of that cost is is in labor costs absolutely and if you don't know how to do it there's only one way to learn and that's by doing it so oh, yeah. and and any reputable shop is going to charge a hundred plus dollars an hour sure that adds up in a big hurry yeah. but it's fairly simple to do almost everything yourself and anything you can't figure out there's a tutorial on YouTube yeah you that's the beautiful that. part well and if you're gonna learn how to work on a car and do things you know, are you going to learn on this, uh, you know, a $500 rolling shell of a Nova, you know, versus, you know, big high dollar type cars, you know, you, you're not going to try to learn uh, on, on a big dollar rare Corvette or a Hemi Cuda or no. something of that nature. You're going to, you know, you learn on an average car and you make it look nice, you do whatever work you're going to do to it, and, and maybe you don't paint it yourself. But you know what? You can still do a lot of the work yourself. Absolutely, you can do that. And as the show goes on, we're not gonna teach you how to build a car because everybody has a different way of building it, but there will be some little tips and shortcuts that we've found along the way, and you're gonna see those on here. So keep, keep joining us, join us for our next episode, and we'll have another car on here and something really fun. Yeah. Let's go to BJ's. I haven't been in there in a long time. What the?